I get stomach aches every day when I go to do a shoot. Like literally, I will wake up in the morning, stomach ache. Hi, I'm Christopher Cox, formerly known as Sea Cox 97, the Nerf King, and I've been an independent filmmaker for over 15 years. And today I'm going over more film advice from the most recent shoot I did for my upcoming horror short film, The Noise Next Door. Shot it last uh, Saturday, and it was the most stressful day ever. And I learned a lot, so time for me to share with you what I learned. First thing I learned, and a lot of these I've learned before, but seriously, this time it was big. Every second counts. Time is not on your side on any production. You may think you have everything prepared, but guess what? You don't, and it, things will go wrong. That's just how it goes. And right away, things went wrong. I don't blame anyone for anything. I had you know, some people coming to me apologizing because they arrived late or they had trouble with the equipment pickup, and then we had some troubles with a certain clubhouse that I rented for the shoot to have an extra space, but it was like a two minute walk, and just, you know, things happen. And uh, we ended up like an hour and a half behind schedule Joel by like shot number seven and I also had planned a lot for the day. For example, Abby's monster was shot over two days and we scheduled about 50 shots across those two days to get done. Uh, this shoot had 54 shots planned for one day. So yeah. Hey, I mean, we just hit the ground running. Uh, once you're starting behind, there's nothing to do but catch up and oh boy did it keep me going and I learned a lot of new tactics to keep things going. Which smoothly transitions into the second piece of advice that I have now learned, uh, new directing tactics. I really learned to just stop a take right away. If I don't like it, I don't have time to let it keep running and maybe save some of the later footage. No, 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 no. If I don't like it and it's not working, just no, stop. But don't cut. I tried not to cut too much because when you cut, everything turns off, you gotta get the slate for the next shot and it kinda kills the momentum. So when you're in the shot and you already know you don't like it, I said hold instead, hold, give the note back to one. Just do it quick, keep rolling, and you can do multiple takes, multiple takes. And the other lesson that I learned with that is, you know, even though you have sound rolling, if you need things timed properly, you're the director, just keep talking, just say what you need, give a countdown, three, two, one, turn, stuff like that, so that way things are actually in sync. So that was a lot of things that I learned with the shots that I was trying to get, where there's a lot of moving parts, and you know, I'm not realizing that like, oh, I didn't communicate properly, that what I actually want is for this step to be like this, or for you to turn your head, but like slower, and so, Countdowns were very helpful for, for me, where I would be like, and turn, three, two, one, stop. And that way the camera can also be in sync with that, and it just made things run a lot smoother. But all of this actually does lead into my next tip, uh, rehearsal days. I needed a rehearsal day. Now, the reason I didn't do a rehearsal day and why I've actually never really done one before is because it basically is a non-shooting day. I mean, you're paying everyone to come to the location or presumably a location that's similar to the actual one, and you're running through all the shots. You're actually finding out the beats that you want, the timing, the blocking especially, so that way everyone is on the same page when you go to get the shot on the real day. That was something that ate up a lot of time with this shoot where we would, you know, as soon as we're setting up the lighting for the next shot, it would be, okay, so what's the shot? And right away, you know, I have to explain the shot and I have to explain the blocking and that's precious seconds, minutes being wasted away that would have been completely saved if there was a rehearsal day to go through it all. So that way you don't really need to explain too much or you just give like a simple quick explanation and immediately they're like, yeah, I remember, got it. And then you go for it. And uh, yeah, just didn't do a rehearsal day, but I will be doing rehearsal days from now on because they would save me a lot of time and headaches. I, I really think, it, it, I mean, Obviously, rehearsal days are really important for complicated shots, like if you're doing a big one -er with you know lots of moving pieces and the camera's doing all kinds of wacky stuff, yeah, you're gonna wanna do a rehearsal because who knows how long it could take. You could get it on the second take or you could get it on the 12th take. Like, at the end of the day, if you're going for the best version of that shot, sometimes it might take way longer than you expect, but a rehearsal day will really help with that. And also just bring everyone into a more comfortable setting where it's like, okay, I definitely feel prepared going into this, so they're not quite as stressed out. Next piece of advice, and uh, this you should know by now if you've ever heard about filmmaking, uh, nothing is ever easy. 
It really isn't. I, I think there's a lot of times where you're preparing for a shoot and you assume a certain shot or a certain effect that you're going for will be easy because like, okay, all you do is this, right? Now, things can go wrong. We had a special effects, some kind of liquid that we were working with and uh, yeah, it just didn't work. It, it totally did not show up right on camera and it wasn't, it just didn't land the way I wanted it to. But you don't have time to fix it, so it's just, all right, we're just running with it. You know, there, there's a common term in film as well where it's like, well, we'll fix it in post. And yeah, you don't really wanna have to say that. You'd rather get it on the production day, but you know, it, nothing is ever easy. There was another section with ADR that I just like didn't properly prepare for and I thought I eh, will just kind of stop by real quick and get that ADR while they're setting this up but then turns out we took way too long to get the ADR and everyone else was already set up so I'm like uh, just get a shot that you can do without the actor uh, this shot get this shot so then they did it. Unfortunately though the shot that they got they didn't quite get all of it it, it, I can't give away spoilers, but essentially they were filming a television screen and they didn't actually record the whole thing, which is what I did want, but they didn't know that. And it was just, bup, 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 you know, stuff happens, you, you know, not, not everyone knows everything. And that got complicated. Just a simple thing as, oh yeah, we'll just get ADR at some point, but it turned into a whole fiasco sort of. So yeah, just nothing's ever easy. But you know, when things go wrong, it's okay. You keep going. And let me tell you, your body will keep you going because the fifth tip that I can give, the lesson that I learned is adrenaline is a hell of a drug. I've always known that adrenaline really kicks into high gear for me leading up to a shoot. In the past, it would be more of a nervous adrenaline because uh, fun facts, ever since I was a kid with making Nerf videos and stuff, I get stomach aches every day when I go to do a shoot. Like literally, I will wake up in the morning, stomach ache. This time around, it was the day before I already had the stomach ache. I knew I was stressed. But also, whenever I'm shooting, again, since I was a kid, it's been like this, the whole body just shuts down. Bodily function, I don't go to the bathroom, I don't eat, like I don't stop. I, I, it is just like adrenaline, just pumping and fueling me. And I think it's important to use that adrenaline to keep yourself going and understand that you have this momentum, you know, it, like mentally you are so like locked in, you know, like this entire shoot matters so much. So you're completely locked in and hopefully your cast and crew are also locked in. And if you're locked in in a positive way, and you really you know, motivate them, then they will also lock in. But as, as well, I think there's a caution with that adrenaline that you do need to like pace yourself. Don't kill that momentum. I definitely was running out of steam a little bit towards the end, um, and I think it's because there was so much movement. Like, it, it is hard to kind of pace yourself. Like, even when I was eating, like, there's just no way to change the mind anywhere else. And sure, it's good but be, be mindful of yourself and also be mindful of how you're coming across. If you have that adrenaline pumping you and maybe the shoot's really stressful and it's not going well, you gotta be careful because you are the one who's gonna be the highest up here with the energy and stuff. And if that is nervous, possibly angry energy, that can really kill the vibe for the rest of the cast and crew because if you're the cast and crew, you're like, oh my God, he is really like, Ugh. so just be careful with that but as well be aware that, yeah, you're, you're pumping, you're going for it, it's like a sport, you're locked in, so use it. it. It will be helpful. It was so funny because as soon as we got the final shot and I said, that's a wrap, I felt all that adrenaline just drain out of my body. I was starting to yawn nonstop. I was like, wow, okay, uh, now I'm back to the real world. <laughs> But there you have it. There, that is all of the uh, major lessons that I have learned in the most stressful shoot ever and the biggest shoot. I mean, honestly, for those of you who have followed me forever, I, I can safely say this is like a landmark in my film career. I really felt everything just step up, uh, not only with the people that I was working, the way that I handled things, uh, but the footage that we got. It's it's awesome. I'm very proud of the outcome. And while yes, you know, it didn't go perfectly, I know it will not be my masterpiece. All that I care about is it's the best one I've done yet. And I can safely say it will be. So stay tuned for The Noise Next Door. The tentative release schedule sometime in June. There will be a trailer about a week before then. Uh, you can also check out my Patreon where I am posting updates and stills and other sneak peeks up there. And that of course will all uh, go back to support me with this film. Please like and share this video with anyone else who is looking for advice on filmmaking or just art in general. I know this video is a little more specific with film production, but you know, if, if anyone's ever curious, uh, you definitely please share it. You know, get bless the algorithm gods with getting this 
video out there. <laughs> or bless me, because I need the whatever. Comment below other advice that you would like to hear. I will be uploading more of these film advice videos in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Stay tuned.